Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I get to share with you a Gerda Steiner Designs project using this stamp set and it is just so cute. It's called Lovely Pandas and the little panda that has his head resting on his hand is super adorable. So we're going to use him on our project today. We're going to start off by doing some stamping. I have a piece of Nina 80 pound cardstock here. I'm going to ink up my little panda with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And we are going to color in this little guy um, the same way for all three, but with my Copic markers. Um, I just used a black, a gray, um, three shades of gray, and then one shade of pink. But I'm going to zoom in. I left the caps out and I did list the colors that I used the left corner for you guys, but I'll play some music while I color and then I will catch you back. Okay, coloring is all done, and oh my goodness, aren't they so cute? Oh goodness, they just remind me of those cute little babies you just want to love on. <laughs> okay, I'm taking my scissors, and I'm fussy cutting each one of these out. I did leave a little bit of a white border behind my stamped images here. We'll set these aside, and we're going to work on our background. I have a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock here, and I have three different shades of Distress Oxide inks. We're going to blend all three together, starting off with my shabby shutters. We're going to bring in cracked pistachio right next to it, and we'll blend both of these two together. And then for our third color, we're going to go in with uh, peacock feathers. I think these are some pretty colors. I think they create a real fun, bright background. Okay, I think that looks great. Now I have a brick stencil that I've had in my stash. I'm going to tape it, well I'm going to attempt to tape it down to my panel, but my, my ink was still wet so it really wasn't happening. <laughs> so I'm going to hold it down with my hand. But now I'm going to kind of do a reverse stencil with a baby wipe. I started off by dabbing off any excess of the oxide ink that was on top of my panel here. And when I lifted it up, my, my baby wipe was a super juicy baby wipe. So I decided just to go ahead and, and wipe over my stencil. And that worked out great. It really took away the color. But I think this adds a, a really neat amount of texture um, on your background. So I thought it, we'd do something a little different today. <laughs> I'm just using my heat gun to dry off my panel making sure it's nice dry because we were get, we are going to be um, heat bossing on this panel. Once it's dry I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer and then um, we're going to trim this panel down to three and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. So it's going to be narrower than my card base but it's going to be the same um, length as my card base. Now after this panel is trimmed down, I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock and trim that down to the same size. So again, it'll be three and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. And um, I'm going to trim this down a little bit more. I think my cutting was off when I trimmed it down originally. <laughs> okay, now I want to create a, a real fun window. And I wanted to do a window that everybody can do with their rectangle dies. So this is the smallest one in my set. I'm just taping it down to the very bottom of this panel and it's basically going to leave me a, about a quarter of an inch. 
around. I'm going to do the same thing to the top of my panel. I'll just run that through my die cut machine and then I'm going to take it one more time and put it in the middle. And I did the top and bottom first. This way I can center the middle one and it'll create a, um, a three window paned window. Okay, I think that looks great. Now we are going to go ahead and stamp our sentiment. For my sentiment I chose I like you very much. It's super cute. And I'm going to heat emboss with my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. So using my anti-static powder tool, I'm going to stamp on my lower window. So I'm going to use my window as a guide and also one of my pandas. This way I know where to stamp. But I'll ink up my sentiment and we'll stamp right um, towards the upper portion of my little window here. Lovely. Now we're going to go over our sentiment with some clear embossing powder. This is going to make the sentiment stand out, I think, a little bit more, especially over that oxide ink. I'm going to go ahead and melt it. Lovely. Okay, now using my window, my window frame as a guide, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to mark the very bottom parts of each one of my windows. After I have this done, um, in the stamp set, there's a heart cluster here. I thought it'd be fun to add a little bit of detail with that, those little hearts. So I'm going over my panel again with my anti-static powder tool and then I'm going to take some Versamark ink this time and I'm going to ink up my little hearts and I'm stamping just barely below my pencil mark. That way I know it's um, going to be partially underneath my frame there. I'm going to stamp it three times and then I'm going to go over um, my stamped images with white embossing powder this time. I thought since my frame was white, it'd be nice to have a little bit of white detail in that background. So I'm just going over my little hearts and then I'll take my heat gun and we'll go ahead and melt our little heart clusters here. And we'll just do the bottom one here. Okay, super cute. Now I thought we'd add a little sparkle. Um, I'm going to be using my Wink Estella shimmer pen. It's a clear shimmer pen and I'm just going to go over each one of my little heart clusters. This way the hearts kind of stand out a little bit more um, behind that brick background. And we'll do the same thing to our very bottom one. Lovely. Got some sparkle. Now I'm going to take my frame, we're going to flip it on the back side, and I'm going to add some foam tape behind it. And then this is going to give our window frame a little bit of dimension. We're going to add that to our background panel, just kind of lining it up. Um, I wasn't sure if my pencil marks were going to show, so just in case, I'm using my eraser to erase them. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and add our window. Lovely. And it kind of separates each one of those colors and I think that just looks so neat. Now we're going to add our panda. I'm going to add some dimensional adhesive behind him. And then using my tape runner I'm going to add a little bit of tape around him too. Because this one here is going to be hanging off um, a little bit of the frame here. So I want to make sure he's stuck down good. And then my other two pandas I did already add dimensional adhesive behind there. We're just going to add one to each window. Okay, I'm going to take my card base and originally I was going to add a piece of black and white striped paper, but I just, I wanted um, my background to really stand out, so I thought we'll just leave it like this. I think this looks beautiful. So we're going to tape down our panel to our card base, which is a standard A2 size card base. And for bells and whistles, I brought in some little blue gems. We're just going to add a few here and there. And then that completes my card for today guys love this little cute little panda my goodness i thank you so much for joining me um if you're interested in any of the products that i use today i'll link them down below for you but have a great day and we will see you again real soon Bye bye